Hey guys, it's Catfish here again and welcome back to my channel. There's been a viral question going around the internet about if you were alone in the woods, would you prefer to be stuck with a man or a bear? From what I've seen, most females around the ages of 14 to 24 on TikTok say that they would rather be stuck with the bear. I'd rather be stuck in a forest with a man or a bear. The bear. 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 And this question actually raises better questions about the way people think and perceive. Right before I talk more about this, let's just get this out of the way. The correct answer, scientifically and logically speaking, is that being stuck with a man in the woods is far better than being stuck with a bear, both in the best case scenario and the worst case scenario. Let's first talk about the man. The question did not specify what type of man, so it is assumed to just be a random stranger. Depending on your perception of what an average man would do to you in the woods if he was free of all consequences, responses can vary from being optimistic, thinking that a man would help, protect, and help you survive, to thinking that the man might overpower, assault, or kill you. Again, this goes into the whole philosophical debate of whether the man was truly free of all consequences in this scenario. After all, he has to think about what is going to happen to him after he leaves the woods, especially if he did do something to harm you. If this scenario places both you and the stranger as the last two remaining humans in the woods and there was nobody else anymore, then perhaps that is a more certain way of stating that the man would act without consequences. The people who are saying that they would choose a bear over a man are people who solemnly believe that an average man in the society would cause them more harm than they perceive a bear to cause. So let's get some facts down real quick. Let's talk about the bear. Stumbling upon a bear is not a 100% death sentence. There has been many recorded incidents of experienced survivalists kicking the dirt, standing their ground, raising their arms to appear as big as possible to ward off the bear, with success. Depending on the age, the gender, and the type of bear, your survival chances can also vary wildly. If it was a female grizzly bear or a polar bear, which are often cited to be the most dangerous types, then you will have a very little chance of surviving if it chooses to attack. Again, the bear is not a 100% death sentence, but an aggressive or hungry bear is a near virtual 100% death sentence. Bears can run up to 30 miles per hour, can swim, and climb trees so there is no escaping a bear. Survivalists are taught that when exploring the woods, talking, wearing a bell, and making your presence known to bears is key because bears can hear you and they will leave. But if you catch a bear by surprise, that is a whole nother story. The problem with trying to answer this question without more information is that there are too many variables in the equation. You can't possibly know the man's intention or the bear's intention. You don't know how big the bear or the man in this hypothetical scenario is. And most importantly, you don't know the personality of the man or the bear. Therefore, to compare what you think an average man versus an average bear is too speculative and opinion-based rather than science and logic. In thought experiments like this, where there are an infinite number of ways you can imagine the situation to go, a better way of approaching it is to think about what you would do in the best and worst possible scenario. In this case, if a man had intention to assault and kill you, the best thing you could do is to attempt to kick him in the balls or try to gouge out his eyes. Even if a man was much bigger than you, human beings are not covered with a fur coat, so you could bite or claw his skin to deal some significant damage. You could even try to outrun the guy. The average man runs at 8 miles per hour while the average female runs at 6.5 miles per hour. The difference is much closer than the average running speed of a human versus a bear. To be clear, if a bear had intention to kill you, you are dead. Bears run at 30 miles per hour, so you cannot outrun them. Bears are covered with a thick layer of fur that makes them practically immune to all human attacks. 
an adult female grizzly bear weighs between 200 and 450 pounds on average. So if they catch up to you and pin you down, which they will, there is no way you're going to lift 450 pounds while the bear places its jaws around your skull and closes it. Speaking of a bear's jaw, it has 1,200 PSI of pressure, which means they can crush a bowling ball with just their jaw without even trying. If you put your arms up to defend your head while it's trying to rip out your throat, your arms will be bitten through the bone in under a second and severed right at the elbow and ripped straight clean. It's quite literally the most helpless and terrifying way to die. Even in the best case scenario within this worst case scenario, say you had a knife or a gun. The knife would probably give you a slight edge over the man, but a knife is definitely not going to help you against a 400 pound bear with a longer arm reach than you. A 9mm pistol could easily kill a man, but not the bear. Due to the thick 1 inch skull of a bear, 9mm rounds are known to lack the required punch to take down a bear reliably. So in the worst case scenario, if you are fighting a bear versus fighting a man for your life, you are most definitely better off fighting a man than fighting a bear. Let's also talk about the best case scenario. The best case scenario is that a bear leaves you alone and goes away. But now, you know that you're in bear territory and you are still alone. And whether you know how to survive in the woods by yourself is a whole another question. Do you know how to make a fire? Do you know how to chop trees or build shelter? What if you sprint an ankle while walking? What will you do for food? Obviously not the bear. But the best case scenario with a man is that they help you survive. Just as severe and extreme that we could assume that the worst man possible in this situation is an escaped convicted serial killer with intention to kill you, we could equally assume with the same level of extremity that the best possible man is a survivalist or camper with years of experience on how to survive and navigate your way out of the woods. If you sprain an ankle, you could be carried. If injuries happen, he would know how to treat them. As someone else had already put it perfectly, if you were jogging alone and you had a crippling accident and you're screaming for help, would you want nearby men that heard your screams to help you or not? Narrow trail hears the faint cry for help in the distance. He races toward the sound and finds a young woman holding on to her mom who had just slipped down the trail. Help, thank you, I'm sorry. I, I got her by the foot. The good Samaritan grabs her other foot. Therefore, by comparing both the worst case scenario and the best case scenario, the correct answer is to be stuck with a man when you're alone in the woods. Anyways, if logical discussions like this interest you, please let me know down in the comments what other thought experiments or hypothetical questions you would like me to answer using science and logic. Until that time, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.